temple of Kali on the eastern bank of the river where Ramakrishna was then living. Sri Ramakrishna took to him at once. But Noren had other things on his mind and after a few preliminaries, he shocked the assembled group by asking his inevitable question. Sir, have you seen God? Yes, I see him just as I see you here. Only in a much intenser way. Yes, yes, God can indeed be realized like that. Not only that, you can talk to him as I'm talking to you. For the first time, he was face to face with a man who said openly and without guile that he had seen God and even talked to him. He had met his match, for Ramakrishna, though ignorant in the worldly sense of the term, had crossed the ocean of illusion and realized the supreme truth. He was a Siddha, an avatar, and he had already marked Norin for his own. Here the goddess Kali had revealed herself to her devoted child, Ramakrishna, and bestowed upon him all the divine grace of a transcendental wisdom. Kali, the mother goddess, has often been misunderstood in and out of India. The word Kali is derived from Kal or time. Hence, she is a symbol of death and destruction. In another and deeper sense, she is also the transcendence in which all mental ideas and forms disappear. In the inner view of things, she is a power of Brahman or reality. If, in one hand, she holds the severed head, in the other, she offers boons and protection. Destroyer and preserver, Kali the mother, is the goddess of the brave and the heroic. Quiet day. Krishna was seated on his bed, relaxed, when Norin entered and approached him. Ramakrishna was very glad to see Norin, as he always was. But the next moment, the saint had gone into a deep ecstasy. Then, he muttered something and came closer and closer to where Norin was sitting. He stood up, still in ecstasy, and touched Norin's body. What are you doing to me? I have my parents at home. All right. All right. Let's rest now. Everything will come in time. And for a while, all was as before. But really, it would never be the same again. The incident, first of a series, amazed Norin. Thereafter, he could not help thinking more and more of Sri Ramakrishna. But he would not give in so easily. A part of his being still questioned. Could this be hypnotism? He wondered. It was something that he could not explain. Anyway, Norin continued to visit Dokhineshwar. At times, he openly ridiculed Ramakrishna, which hurt and shocked the simple devotees. But for all that, he could not deny or resist the unbounded love and childlike simplicity of the saint. It was at this time that Norin, then barely 21, was faced with unexpected difficulties. His father passed away. A large-hearted man, Sri Vishwanath Dutto, had lived beyond his means and left no savings. Here he is, without rest, without security, on the Maidan in Calcutta. There was nothing he had not tried and failed.
At last, Noren went to Sri Ramakrishna and prevailed upon him to appeal to Mother Kali to relieve the distress of his family. To this, Sri Ramakrishna said, I have never asked for any material gains from my mother. I cannot do that even now. But if you go to the temple this evening and ask for yourself, I assure you, the mother will grant you whatever you ask for. But why will she listen to me? I say she will, Ramakrishna said. It was evening. Sri Ramakrishna asked Narin to go inside the temple and pray to the mother. He went accordingly. Ramakrishna asked, Did you ask the mother to remove the distress of your family? Narin said, Oh no, I forgot. What did you ask for then? asked Ramakrishna. I asked for wisdom, devotion, and renunciation. Go and ask again. Narin went thrice, but every time, like his master, for himself, he could not ask anything. Narin had a fierce intellect. For six years, he struggled and struggled. But during this period, he learned prodigiously. Among other things, he learned from his matchless master, O Guru. All the rivers flow to the same ocean of supreme being. The goal is the same for all. He learned that the one who is Hori to the Hindu is Allah to the Muslim. Father in heaven, to whom the Christians pray, is one of the same supreme being. Kulun to Vishwing, Amadasta Putra, Aedhamani Divani Tastu, Vedahamitam Purusham Mahantam. Aditya Varanam Tamasa Parastat Tameva Viditati Mrityumeti Nanna Pantha Yidyati Hayanaya Thus spake Ramakrishna to the disciple he had mocked and chosen. To Narendranath, his guru seemed to symbolize India's ageless culture, a living embodiment of all that was best in man and in India. From Sri Ramakrishna, he learned that religion was not something to be merely talked about, but that it must be realized and lived out. He also learned that unity and diversity was nature's plan and that India had a message for the world today. He must live that truth and spread the master's message, come what may. In the meantime, Sri Ramakrishna had fallen seriously ill and had to be removed to this garden house at Kashipur in the neighborhood of Calcutta. The end was near. He advised the disciples to dedicate their lives to the service of God and man. He also nominated Narin as the head of the group. He called the twelve disciples and gave them the Okha robe, the age-old symbol of the ascetic life in India. He gave some final instructions to Narin. Take care of the boys, he said. Thus was formed the nucleus of the Ramakrishna order or mission. Four days before he passed away, he called Narin. Soon he went into deep ecstasy, but for some time he kept looking intently at Narin's eyes. He was clearly concentrating for a purpose. Narin felt 
as if a subtle force resembling an emanation of electric energy was flowing into his body. Norin, today I have given you all I had. There is nothing of my own left. Now with these, you shall carry out great tasks in the world. And on the 15th of August, 1886, the master passed away. But he had left a successor, trained for mighty deeds. After the passing away of the master, the young disciples lived in this tumble-down house which no one else would rent. The house enjoyed the reputation of being haunted. It certainly looked its part. For their daily needs, they had to beg from door to door. Not all were as kindly as this lady here. For many days, they had just rice and salt, an austere diet indeed. But they did not complain. The brave band was undaunted, and Norin kept the group going valiantly and patiently towards wider horizons of service, sacrifice, and fulfillment of the Master's wishes. Soon a break came. In India, it is customary to go on pilgrimage. The Swami felt the urge, and for some time he became a wandering monk or Parivrajika. For him, it was a new experience of India and her people, and must have sharpened his sense of mission. In 1881, he left Calcutta. He first went to Banaras, or Varanasi, the heart of religious Hindustan. Holy its air, dust of the city of Shiva. In the temple of Vishwanath, he glimpsed eternal India, ageless, the same forever. They come from all over the country, speaking different languages, following different customs. Here, the Swami could feel the source of Indian unity, the unity of culture and religion, a wide toleration and deep understanding of the ways of the spirit. Sometimes in the evening, the young Swami would sit here on the river cart. <laughs> And his mind would go back to Dukhineshwar and his master. He also paid a visit to Ajodha, sacred city of Ramo, and Bindavan, city of Krishna. Pushkar, the legendary birthplace of Brahma himself. Rishikesh, land of ascetics and spiritual seeking down the ages. He saw the exquisite paintings of Ajanta, the rock cut temples and sculpture of Elora, the Buddhist stupa at Sanchi, the shrines of Bhuvaneshwar the famous sun temple of Konarak, and he felt within himself the imperishable heritage of India, mighty voices of silence whispering their deathless enchantment. From all these, he drew fresh inspiration. Hastinapur or Delhi, where the fate of so many empires has been decided at one time or the other, rich in Mughal remains, fort, turret, mosques, palaces, the splendor of architecture, impressed the Swami. Taj Mahal, splendid symbol of the love of Shah Jahan for his beloved Muntaz Mahal, a lover's gift, a poem in marble. He visited Fadipur Sekri, the dream city of Akbar, where the emperor had nursed hopes of a universal faith in Bin Elahi. Rajasthan, the land of chivalry and heroism. Its capital, Jaipur, is the first planned city of India. 